DNA replicates by a semi-conservative method. So what that means is you end up with two DNA molecules that are identical to the original molecule that also contains one strand from the original parent molecule. First stage is helicase enzymes separate the two strands apart. The point where they're separated to is called the replication fork and this moves along the molecule of DNA. Each strand of the DNA molecule gets kept apart by single strand binding proteins which prevents the molecule from recombining. The formation of the new strands gets catalyzed by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. It uses the parent strand as a template, it reads the sequence of the bases and it adds in additional complementary bases as it moves along to form a new strand. DNA polymerase reads the parent strand in a 3 to a 5 prime direction and then it builds what's called the leading strand in a 5 to 3 prime direction towards the replication fork. So as it reads the bases, it adds complementary bases in and because the strands are anti-parallel that means they move in the 5 to 3 direction. Do have a separate video on what we mean by 3 to 5 prime. Uh, which you can look at if you can't remember that, but essentially it's anti-parallel. So this strand is upside down version of this. If you look at this base here, the symbol that represents this base, it's upside down compared to this one on this strand. And you ultimately end up with the exact same strand of DNA that you started with. All the bases are complementary following the base pairing rules. So you end up with another molecule of DNA starting to be formed that is exactly the same as the parent strand with one strand from the parent and one new strand. The opposite side, the other side, is called the lagging strand which gets built in a 3 to 5 direction away from the replication fork. So if you think about it, it's essentially the opposite of what's happening on this side. It's being read in a 3 to 5 prime direction because this strand is already the same as this one that's been built or the anti-parallel to this. It gets built in what's called Okazaki fragments and the reason for that is it's moving away from the replication fork so it can't be continuous. It just gets, it's essentially like a loop. So it starts, moves down, adds the complementary bases in and then returns to the replication fork and continues this in small sections. These fragments are then later joined together by DNA lycase to make one continuous strand. The DNA helix continues to unwind and separate. Helicase enzyme moves along, the replication fork continues, and these two processes we just described continue all the way along the section of DNA. Now there are multiple replication forks, because if you think about it, if you did it in one massive continuous line from the start of a DNA molecule to the end, it would take an extremely long period of time to do it. So to optimize it and speed it up, these replications occur in what's called replication bubbles. This means that these, stra these replication balls will ultimately meet and when that happens the two strands, the two daughter strands of the D original parent DNA molecule are formed. Each one contains one strand from the original DNA molecule and you now have two identical DNA molecules compared to the original parent molecule.